revolutionary music makers! I'm Kate Harmony, this is Ray Harmony, and welcome to Hack Music Theory. And if you're new to our channel, we've got a free book for you, 12 Music Theory Hacks to Learn Scales and Chords, which you can download from our website, hackmusictheory.com. And it takes 30 minutes to read, and you'll have a super solid music theory foundation after that. All right, so um, if you are uh, new to our polymeter party, then uh, let's have a, a quick listen. Uh, we are three, four videos in, three videos, this is four the videos. fourth video in. Four videos this in. This is what we've been making from blank screen. Yeah, blank screen, um, and we've been doing it totally unedited, um, raw footage. So what you see <laughs> here is the music making process with no veil on it. The whole point of this is to is to reveal that you know the the process of making music because it's usually shrouded in secrecy and that doesn't help anyone so uh this is this is what we do here um and i'm gonna play real quick and then i'm gonna tell you a little bit more before i get carried away <laughs> all right so last week we um we wrote this uh crazy piano part um, the the reason this is a polymer party um, is because we I've actually lost count how many times things we have going on now. Um, so the piano, this is the piano part. The right hand is in four four. Uh, the left hand is kind of in it's in it's kind of in seven eight, which matches with the bass, but we kind of manipulate it a little a little bit to sound like it's in four four. So the left hand is in whatever you hear it in. <laughs> um, bit of 7, 8, bit of 4, 4. Um, and then uh, the pizzicato strings, I just had those muted. Um, that's going to be for like a little kind of intro, so um, that's not going to be over this. We'll come back to that, but that's in 5, 16. Uh, bass is in 7, 8. Um, and drums are in... Uh, oh, I can get rid of these. If you if you missed oh yeah if you missed any of the videos um, that we those are all muted we were just using them when we were making the beat um, if you missed any of the videos uh, leading up to this um, we'll put links below for uh, for those and um, this is the drums the drums are in a combination of we got those five sixteen accents on the kick uh, we've also got seven eight on the kick which links with the bass. Um, and then the uh, the pulse was trying to get that four four, and then the the kind of the snare like the 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 drums ended up sounding like one bar of seven four, um, and then one bar of five four. So it cuts over here to to five four. Um, so we were planning on doing four four, but it just happened that way. It sounds really cool because we just placed the snare. Um, so watch that watch the drums one that was episode one um <laughs> if you missed that uh so uh next up today we are doing the cello the lead melody um and the cello uh it it makes sense to obviously throw in another time signature oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness how many do we have i lost count <laughs> Five, sixteen, four, four, and then the seven four Going to five four, we'll just call that. We'll call that like one. one, and then seven eight. So this is going to be kind of like the fifth <laughs> time signature. Um, but here's the thing: um, we actually we added the um, the four four on the piano to make it sound more normal. Um, and what we're going to do now is add a time signature to to kind of pull the whole thing together mm -hmm. and hopefully um <laughs> hopefully what i mean it's a win-win hopefully it's going to make everything sound a little bit more normal but if it makes it sound weirder then that's a win too so which is what, um, he, which is what you said last time making yeah. it more sound more normal yeah which i think it's carnival did. like yeah i think yeah, it sounded, yeah. it sounded, I think it sounded more, normal. more normal so yeah. um <laughs> yeah i don't know because well, i mean without the piano you know, without the piano, ooh, um, it's... You can kind of, you know, it, it's much more difficult to yeah. hold on to something. Well, especially back here when this, the, the snare drum is displaced. Um, and then with these little, like, that reggae skank in the right hand. 
I think it's I think it's a, <laughs> a little more normal. So uh, cello, we are going for a little more normal. And if it doesn't happen, then that's great too because we like yeah. weird. Um, normal's boring. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you make if you make normal music, um, and the science behind this again, as I mentioned last time, uh, if you make normal music, uh, people are going to get sick of it pretty quick. Boring. So um, yeah, so you want to you know you want to challenge yourself as the music maker, and you want to challenge the listeners because when they hear something for the first few times, if they're like, what is that? Um, <laughs> then it's going to keep their mind engaged. They'll keep coming back, you know, those super catchy, um, super simple tunes that you hear and you like the first time, you know, by the, by the fifth listen, um, you're sick of it. So yeah. we don't want to go there. Um, it's all about longevity. Make, Make art, not products. Um, so that's another story. Um, but uh, we are looking at um, adding a time signature for the cello. Um, so all I did, um, as usual, I just copied um, the whatever, whatever you want to start from. I copied the bass up into the cello track because um, the bass line is the main melody at this point. So we'll probably kind of work the cello melody off that Around as a starting that, yeah. point. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I can't remember that. What was that? That was the pizzicato strings. strings. Uh, I don't need those. Um, and I'm just going to mute the bass line. Um, and we're going to we're going to start from there. So the the thing I was thinking with the um, the cello um, the cello part is what is the most normal like what's the most even time signature we could add to this so the most kind of the one that's going to make it sound normal mm. and um <laughs> and i think there's only one there's only one answer to that and the answer is 12 4 because it it's going to tie everything we're doing in all the other tracks. It's going to kind of bring it into into one cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so, and because the cello is going to be the lead melody, um, it's the going cello to the cello. Oh, <laughs> the, the cello. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> Sorry. The 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 cello is going to be the lead melody. So, um, it's going to kind of demand the listener's attention. Uh, which means that mm. if if they're focusing on that, that's kind of going the the full twelve four, so like twelve quarter notes. Um, I feel like everything underneath that, all the weirdness underneath that, um, is going to be kind of framed by the mm. mm -hmm. the the chelody. <laughs> um, because we have twelve bars. Right. Three, That's, 12 quarter notes. 12 quarter um, notes. So, yeah, so we have three, notes, yeah. three bars. Three bars. Sorry. sorry, thank you. I didn't yeah. mention that. We have three bars of 4-4. Four, four. That's how this whole thing started. Yeah. Um, setting up like a, setting up an odd number of bars, which is an amazing hack. Um, and you can obviously just do that even in, in music that does not have polymeters. You know, <laughs> so if you're writing in 4-4, four, four, um, just set up an odd number of bars um, and... It just creates this freshness mm -hmm. um, because it's a little bit unpredictable and people will never really get used to hearing odd numbers of bars um, so it kind of always keeps your music fresh so um, all right so yeah so three bars of four four it gives us 12 uh, quarter notes and that's what I'm thinking for the cello um, the other thing is the the baseline. Actually, everything so far is pretty fast moving. It's mm. it's, it's fast. You know that. Um, I'm just gonna mute the piano. So the cello can obviously play fast. Um, it's it's not about that. It's about what the music wants and. Um, you know, it, with everything moving so quick, I feel like the cello really needs to move slowly um, mm -hmm. in order to um, 
pull everything together. Um, you know, and it's going to be a lead melody. Lead melodies, you always want to be more, um, well, not more, you want your lead melodies to be singable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're on, if it's on a synth or a cello or whatever, um, or a vocal, obviously, <laughs> um, you know, because there are, um, it's quite easy to write vocal melodies that are not very singable either, um, <laughs> you know. So whatever, whatever instrument you are um, writing for, uh, when you're doing a lead melody, sing it, make sure it's singable. Um, so even if you can't sing, just, you know, no one's, no one's going to hear you in your studio. So just, you know, just sit there and sing it and make sure that, you know, it's a singable melody. So that's going to be a good, a good lead melody. Um, all right, let's get going. Um, by the way, if you, um, if you need help writing melodies, um, then use the melody checklist Mm -hmm. in our songwriting and producing PDF. Uh, it's a complete game changer. It's literally just a list of do's and don'ts for writing great melodies. It's that simple. Um, I'll try to kind of throw in a few, um, of the, the concepts here, but if you want the full list, um, make sure to check that. We'll put a link, um, below to that. Um, and uh, also below uh, we'll put a link to our online course which is if you if you're enjoying these videos of the you know unedited writing a song um, then you know because on YouTube we're we're just going to do like this one section Um, if you want to learn how to write a whole song from start to finish then check out our online course the link is below for that as well Um, it'll give you everything you need to um, to write a full song. So all the transitions, how to write new sections for existing sections, all that stuff, it's amazing. Check it out. Um, and write music effortlessly. Making music is fun. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard work. If it's hard work, you're not doing it right. So um, we can help <laughs> you with that. Um, all right, here we go. So I'm, I'm feeling coming in on... <laughs> on a um on the major third and um, we're in the uh double harmonic major um so check out those videos um previously seize the root, seize the root. um the notes are c d flat e f g a flat and b um we talked about it in the first video um if you want an explanation of that so um i'm definitely hearing hearing it coming in on the three um to just immediately give it that uplifting vibe. Um, and so here's the thing, it's usually I would write a lead melody um, kind of much more contoured mm-hmm. using counterpoint um, to um, to the other melody that's already there. Um, but this one, uh, I want it to move so slowly that it's um, it's going to be a very different um, beast. So um, I feel like the the challenge here is going to be how long can we hold each note um, mm, without, without their clashing. Yeah, clashing. yeah, because there's going to be some some pretty interesting um, <laughs> clashes if you just hold it over everything. So. Um, so as the, the C goes up to the D flat here, we can definitely, um, so when you're writing a melody, you want to be, um, you know, th- this is why the melody checklist is, is so good because you need to be paying attention to your melodic intervals um, because obviously at the end of the day, it's going to be a melody that you want to be singable. So you need to pay attention to the interval from you know, your first note in the melody to the second note in the melody and so on. But then the other thing is you need to be paying attention to the harmonic intervals, um, which is, you know, everything that's happening below um, your your lead melody um, or above. Um, so th- holding the E over the D flat um, is going to sound great. Um, because it's a um, so over the C it's a it's a major third harmonic interval and then over the D flat this is a minor third harmonic interval Um, so in other words D flat to E is three semitones so D flat is one two three semitones it's minor third it's going to sound lovely Um, and then the B over here um, we can um, 
so these these harmonic intervals like the major third and minor third it's really strong this one isn't going to be as strong but i think we can still hold it um so this is a perfect fourth from the the b so it's a harmonic interval of a perfect fourth which is um you know it's it's super super consonant um so we'll hold that um this is pretty cool because now we get to this is interesting um <laughs> we get to and this is what's so cool about the scale it's a very um it's a very unusual scale because um this is is a flat um but uh by having because that's a, so that's a that's a flat six it's a minor six but by having a major third in the scale it changes the perception of because usually usually you you're going to have a a minor six in a minor scale um but this is a major scale because it's got the major third so um what's cool is this this uh this a flat you're actually going to hear it as like a, a g sharp so you're going to hear it as as a major third on top of the e so that that's very much um that's very much still still good to, and then and, and this is really cool so um so let me just i'm gonna pull these an octave up because this is so cool um just so you can see uh, it's a bit easier to visualize it on top here so so this this is the e uh and then this is the um, the flat six um, coming down to the five. But what what your ear is going to be hearing is um, this as being a, a major third. So we're creating a little E major harmony there, and then E minor. That's cool. Right, which is cool because it's the same thing we're doing here, right? So the C and the and the E that's creating a C major harmony, and then this D flat and the E, um, it's what we're creating there is like a little D flat um, minor harmony, you know, so um, we, because the, the ear is essentially hearing hearing that as um, as a, a C sharp, it's like taking a um, the C major and then just lifting the root so you create a C sharp minor. Um, <laughs> very cool and obviously the fact that sees the root um it's just all kinds of cool lines being blurred here um so so this is actually like quite interesting we could keep going all the way to there um we've got an e here um so when you're writing a melody on top of another melody like this um a lead melody on top of a bass uh if you end up playing like if we if we play the e over the e um it sounds a bit weak because suddenly in that moment um there's no harmony mm -hmm. anymore um you could argue that it's it's an octave you know and technically an octave is a <laughs> harmony um it wouldn't be a harmony if it was in unison then it's like completely the same the same pitch but you know that's an e up there and that's an e an octave lower but it's um you know that an octave is uh is so empty that it doesn't sound like there's no harmonic um richness to that so as soon as you as soon as you hit the same note in your lead melody as you have in your other melody whatever that is um it's just gonna at that moment it's just gonna sound a little bit empty so uh, if you slow the video down <laughs> and listen to that, um, as soon as it hits E on both of those, it's just, it just sounds, it sounds empty and boring. Um, so we need to change here. Um, the other thing is if we held the E, um, then when mm. it goes up to the F here, then we've got that clash, right? Because E and F are right next to each other. So um, that is, that's either way, that's not going to be good. So, um, so this is what we've got so far. Um, that's not bad, actually. Um, that's pretty good. Um, 
Now, E, um, this is where I would use some counterpoints. So we're going from the G down. Um, so counterpoint is all about creating independent um, independence for your different melodies. Um, and your, so your layers actually sound like layers. Um, if you copy the contour of melodies you already have in your music, then you can add as many tracks as you like and it and it's going to be perceived by the listener mm -hmm. as one layer because they're all just copying each other um when you when you counter um your other melody then you can literally just have two melodies and the the the, the thickness in uh, the depth in, in you know in in your um your harmonic um texture is is incredible so you will you will hear um, two melodies as being two very distinct layers. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you can have 10, you can have 100 tracks all doing the same thing um, and it sound, it's perceived as one layer. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, I'm thinking the obvious thing to do here would be to go up to the G. Um, so E and the G. Mm -hmm. So always thinking, um, you know, well, we want to be thinking melodic, I kind of do that instinctually, instinctively, instinctively. instinctively. That's what I said. <laughs> um, so uh, E up to G. It's a, a minor third, nice, nice strong interval um, melodically. But now thinking harmonically, the E to the G that's minor third, and then as the F goes up um, to the G, that's lovely as well. Um, that's two semitones. That's a major second. That's nice. Um, and then check this out. If we hold this over here the the d flat to the g is super dissonant um that's that's that tritone um the devil in music um <laughs> it's uh that's a bit unfair by the way those are the old days we don't think it is anymore but um <laughs> it's uh it is it's super dissonant um do do we want that? Uh, mm, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> no. Mm. No. I think that's good. I think... Yeah. Okay. You know um, what I am thinking is everything. Everything so far in the song um, just mm -hmm. starts all together on the one. So I think. It'd be really cool to actually bring this in a little bit later. Um, I would kind of think I would. I'd, I'd like to do the two, but then we lose that cool little. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so maybe bring it in just on the one and. Mm, that's cool because then that changes on the and, and that changes on the and. So let's try this. Oh, undecided. Hmm. Undecided. I might leave. Oh, I don't Can know. I cruise? I like it on the two. Yeah, it's actually feels a little long coming in. Yeah, okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, okay, now uh, we're going, so um, bass is going down to that. D flat. So, I mean, the, the obvious thing to do here would be to get back to that E again. Um, but I feel like we've just spent a lot of time on the E, so um, let's go elsewhere. Um, so what we could do is, oh, this would be cool. If we approach that, that D flat um, as... Um, in, in terms of the harmony. Um, so every time you have a, every time you have a note... Um, there's anytime you want to harmonize a note, so we're adding um, a note in our lead melody. Um, you can think of the note in the melody that you already have. So in the bass here, we've got a D flat. You can think of that D flat as uh, as any note in a chord that you're about to build, um, which kind of means that it could be like that. You know, you could harmonize that. Um, with all the other notes, basically. Um, so I think uh, uh, that's a bit much. Um, that's like too too many options, too many choices. So um, 
a good place is just, just to start with a basic triad harmony. So you kind of think of the D flat. A D flat could be the one, could be the root of a chord. It could be the three, um, either major or minor third, um, or it could be the five. Um, and then you kind of work around the harmony of that. So um, I'm, I'm wondering if we if we approach it um, from from the other side, maybe. So thinking of this as as the third in the chord, um, and I would I would love to actually hit an A here, which is going to take us out of the scale. I wonder how naughty that would be. Because if we, oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to check that. Okay, so we could be putting a non-diatonic note in here. Um, whenever you are thinking about, so non-diatonic notes, just a note that's not in a scale. Um, whenever you are doing that late in the day, like we are here, because there's already a bunch of music going on, mm -hmm. um, you need to make sure that that non-diatonic note is not clashing with a the the diatonic version of that note um so if i add an a here i need to make sure that i'm not playing an a flat in the piano or in 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 anything else so however many tracks you have you need to go through and make sure that you're not playing um the diatonic version of that note um so if i want to play this a i need to make sure that we um are not playing the a flat in the piano and we are not. Oh yeah, because this is the same as, as the bass. So E, G. Oh, sweet, sweet. Okay, so we're going outside of the scale. We're going off-roading, folks. Um, yeah, because this is going to be so nice to have the... Um, it's going to be that same effect, right? So if I just kind of pull these guys up. Um, so what we're creating here is the A to the D flat, um, you're actually going to hear that as a C sharp. So you're going to hear this as A major, a little A major harmony, and then A minor. Um, so it takes us out of the scale, but that's, that's, that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering, actually... I, I, I like it, but it sounds too consonant almost. Um, it kind of did the job a little too well. Um, so, because obviously um, going E, G, A, what we're doing is we're kind of really pulling out the C major quality of, um, of the scale. Um, so, because this scale is... C major with a flat two and a flat six. So by not playing the flat six, um, we're diluting it, turning it kind of back into the C major, which so go down to the flat six. Yeah, I don't know. Um, because I was really hoping, like I like that. Mm. That little hearing that, mm, but. I mean, it would still, like, if we played, if we played the A flat over the C, that would be cool. Um, because um, that would give us a little A flat major harmony. Um, hmm. So maybe we should hold this and create that tritone. That could be nice. And then up to the, um, that... A flat major harmony. Oh, yeah. That's nice. I like that. That's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's like, it's such a weird scale that like, um, by going, by going out of the scale, it actually made it sound like too normal, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, and uh, <laughs> that's really cool. Like when you have, um, when you have uh, crazy scales, you know, it's like, it's crazy because of how far removed it is from, like, the major scale or the minor scale. Um, so, you know, by going out of, out of 
the crazy scale towards uh-huh. the major scale, it was like, oh, that's actually <laughs> losing, losing the magic of what makes this scale so cool. Um, all right, now what do we do with this one? Um, so D flat. Um, let's see. I feel like we could come down to the F here, maybe. Um, mm. Create a little major harmony there. Um, and then we could hold it over there. Could probably keep it going all the way to there. So let me just see. I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, so uh, I'm trying to make this sound normal. And so what I'm currently doing, like by uh-huh. changing, um, by changing on the 16th note here, I'm kind of sticking to like that seven, eight, um, the bass line of that. So I'm going to actually not change there. I'm going to change on, on the quarter note. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of syncopation uh-huh. here. <laughs> And here, but then it changes on the quarter note, which is going to sound um, mm-hmm. much more locked in with um, with that that quarter note pulse. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, and it kind of makes this it makes this sound more syncopated in the bass. Um, that, that flat two down there. Um, okay, cool. Um, and I feel like that's a little phrase. That's you know? what I was thinking. Yeah, it needs a there phrase now. Good. Yeah, needs a yeah. breath. Yeah. So yeah. phrasing is exactly that. It's phrasing is where your melody breathes, um, and one of the um, one of the common um, mistakes is to think of phrasing as something f- for singers. Um, phrasing mm-hmm. is a musical thing. So um, when you are writing your lead melody, it doesn't matter if it's on the synth or um, cello, whatever. Um, phrasing is going to allow your melody to breathe. Um, and and that also frames these these little um, these little segments, um, you know, gives your melody structure, um, and which makes it more digestible and then more memorable. Especially yeah. if if you're kind of doing some some weird weird chisel like this. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, okay, so we're gonna have a rest somewhere. I don't know where we because we could. We could rest earlier and then so I think what we need to do is like when you have a phrase what you actually oh hello <laughs> don't, don't, do that. don't do that <laughs> um, when you have a phrase what you want to do is um, instead of thinking about how long should you rest like what you want to think about is where do you hear the melody coming in again yeah um, and don't be kind of sidetracked by um, because you can be put off, like if you kind of hold this note that long and then you think a phrase there and then that means we need to start over here. Um, you know, that's, that decision was made just because of the length of this note, which is currently that's arbitrary because we're still writing the melody. So have a listen and decide where we think the melody should start again. You actually hear it starting like mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. Um, which is also on the sixth beat, um, which um, sorry not the sixth beat it would it's the um, it would be outlining um, a six four um, feeling to it. So maybe the twelve four is going to actually be two bars of six four then. Um, so hmm, that's interesting because we got. Um, six yeah it's gonna be tr- it's gonna be interesting though because if we do that then that means we this is gonna be really cool because if we start here whatever the note is doesn't matter if we start here um giving the feeling of that that kind of um six four then it's going to be interesting when it loops around because this note doesn't, we don't start on the mm-hmm. first beat. Um, so that's going to be very interesting. Hmm. Um, I don't know whether <laughs> that's going to be good. Okay, so um, 
Now we are, um, as you can see, the bass is looping, right? We we were in seven eight and we just looped that. So um, there's a few variations at the end and stuff, but um, so what we want to do is make sure that we, when we kind of come back at things that are looped, so you can see this like this little E G, um, I mean sorry E F, uh, that little quick movement there down to the, the D flat and the C. Um, we've already worked out a melody over the top of that. Um, so this is an opportunity now, like when, when it loops around, um, it's an opportunity to approach the note um, in the bass uh, as a different harmony. Um, and once again, all of this stuff works if you're not doing polymeters, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you're in 4-4, four, four, loop your bass, um, and then, you know, in um, in the first time round, you know, approach the, you know, the the C, whatever, just random note, you know, approach the C um, as the third note in the chord, um, you know, or the first note in the chord, and then the second time through, approach it as, you know, the other one, the first or the third, um, that you didn't do the first time round. So by changing... By changing your um, the way you harmonize notes um, with the melody you're adding, it creates completely fresh harmony. So when you hear this um, little E F um, motif the second time around, it's going to sound completely different to the first time because we've got a different note over it, which means it's creating a different harmony. Uh, so I think <clears throat> it'd be cool to go the other way this time and get down to that D flat. Because um, if we get down to D flat, then um, you can see we're we're creating. So I just put those up an octave so you can see um, we're creating that same little um, that motif of going from like a harmonic minor third to a harmonic major mm -hmm. third. Um, so that could be cool. And obviously D flat is the other note that makes the scale um, unique, right? So we're trying to also emphasize the notes that mm -hmm. um, that make it different from just C major, right? So um, let's, let's have a listen to that. Um, so we wouldn't be able to hold it that long because um, it goes down to D flat here. So then what we can do is maybe switch. Um, so bass is going down, we can go up to that, um, that E, yeah, let's go up to the E, it's going to give us a little, oh, you know what, yeah, we can, I was going to, I was kind of thinking, I don't want to go back to the E, because, you know, that's the, the harmony that we did right in the beginning, but it's not, because we just, we just moved that, um, so we actually that cool little harmony we had in the beginning where it was going to sound like kind of a little C major harmony and then a C sharp minor harmony. Um, we didn't end up actually using that, so no. we can totally do it here. Um, let's have a listen to... Yeah, I like that. So this guy should obviously be a little longer there. Um, so that phrase, the rest in that phrase was, was longer than it needed to be. Um, so... But I think an eighth note rest is nice there. Oh, that's tasty. I like that. I like it. I like how, because um, actually this here is in the drums. That's where um, there's that, the, the first beat of the, the bar of five four. Um, and I love how that first beat completely chops in in half that um that note like the syncopation um it is really cool because you kind of you go up to that note there and then um and then you you have that really strong um strong accent halfway through that note so that would be completely de destroyed um if if uh -huh. we had to play something else there, you know? So for example, if we, if we did that, then you just, right? Because then what you're doing is you're accenting that, um, uh -huh. that first beat um, of the bar of five, or you're accenting that with, with the cello as well. So um, 
it's so cool it's kind of like you know it's that you're listening to the cello note up here and then underneath the drums and bass just slide into this um unexpected accent <laughs> nice 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 uh, okay what are we up to c so we can actually keep this going the e and we can keep it going okay so we could keep it going a very long way longer than we would mm -hmm. want um so um, i feel like maybe here um so when when you are writing uh melodies always think about um the the rhythm put as much um as much time and work into the rhythm as you do the um the pitches so if we change to eighth notes what you'll notice is so far everything so just change change the grid to eighth notes and then having a look at the melody and you'll notice every single note is bang on the eighth note grid which is nice so far <laughs> but if we don't get a little bit of a 16th syncopation in there somewhere um it's gonna start sounding a little bit boring yeah. rhythmically doesn't matter how you know and that's the thing like um you know there's that like so so often um you know when um in the past when i was working you know with a student and they had a melody and it just wasn't working and they would always presume that the problem was the pitches mm -hmm. but you'd be amazed how often you know if you if you have a melody if you just change the rhythm of that melody um so you, all you're doing is changing the the note values of of your melody um and you know where the notes come in where they end where the uh there's rests you know where the phrasing is um you can make such a vast improvement um to i mean yeah you can you can take a a good melody and make it great um through not always obviously it depends on a little disclaimer it depends obviously what you're starting with but you know if you have a solid <laughs> a solid melodic contour um you can really make it something great with um you know by playing around uh with the rhythm so um and once again if you if you want to know what makes a great melodic contour to start with then um use that melody checklist it'll keep you on the right path um okay so i'm thinking right here is where we want to create a little bit of that um that 16th syncopation syncopation once again just accenting that offbeat um so uh we're going down here in the bass so uh we could probably just go up to an f here um i don't think we're, we're not gonna hold it that long necessarily because um you also you want to you want to be careful when you're writing a lead melody not to not to overuse the same notes um you know we're kind of so far so good but you know using this e again um i think that's it's 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 going to give it some um some familiarity which is nice um but you know using the f again we had a long f here so i really don't want to i don't want to overuse that f um and then we want to kind of you know, head into some fresher notes um, for the end bit here, but I think that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. Um, okay. So I think... I don't know if we... might be a little bit too much to, to do another 16th syncopation right after, so I actually think we hold that over there. Um, and um, uh, did we? We did, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of cool because B B to F is is that um, that tritone again, six semitones, right? That's that um, super dissonant sound. Uh, we used it here, so um, 
it's a little motif like but we, we're creating tension there so we we should try to resolve it it's not going to be huge because it's only just a 16th it's just a 16th of tension just there and then we can kind of move to something um more consonant um so i feel like this is kind of where um we only have a little bit left of the of the melody and i'd like to i'd like to get in um you know some some fresh notes and i'd like to extend the range of the melody because having a nice big mm -hmm. range um is is going to make um the melody much more um interesting and um once again give it a um much more longevity because uh, if you have a if you have a melody that's all just like so much uh of popular music now um the the melodies they're in such small ranges um you know and it's like they they do that so it's kind of easily singable but it's so easy singable that it's it gets super boring super quick um having having a big range to your melody um means that you know it's 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 a more difficult melody but once again that that makes it um stand the test of time so um plus it adds drama adds drama definitely definitely gotta have some drama yeah <laughs> So I'm kind of, kind of wondering. Um, I feel like we need a, a climax um, to to our melody, and I'm kind of feeling that. Um, I mean, you always want, you know, you want your melody to have a nice contour and and a and a climax, and um, uh, so. I feel like the best the best thing we could do is actually to um, to leave a little bit open, figure mm. out um, what note we want. Um, so I th like something, yeah. I was I was just about to. I was just about to say this and or think it say it I don't know. <laughs> Talking while thinking it, it's a weird thing. Um, the cello uh, is not currently playing um the root note anywhere so um that's great um because root notes too much of the root note in your lead melody is going to be super boring so um it's like you know it's not a, it's not a bad thing but i think it'd be really cool to to get the root note up here um to really kind of have that climax on on the root note um up there is going to be that's going to be quite special so i feel like um this is kind of a you know slightly different way of of writing a melody i know i want to i want to hit that i want to hit that high c as the climax i just don't know where so now we have to kind of find a spot where that would be good <laughs> um so and and because we have a whole quarter note, um, n not a whole quarter note, <laughs> <laughs> because we have a quarter note rest um, up front here, we could actually have the melody going all the way to the end of mm -hmm. of that um, that bar. Um, so, uh, and and that's a really cool thing uh, to. Uh, to remember you know if you if you're having a rest up front you can you can hold your last note all the way to the end of the bar um uh, i don't know that that's necessarily where we're going to do it though anyway but um no nah, probably not so i feel like um holding okay so holding the c over the d flat's going to clash and then holding the C over the C is boring, as we spoke about early. So I think earlier. So um, we have to stop the C here. 
So we absolutely have to not be playing that C from there. We can play the C over the E and the F and the G and A flat. We can play the C over all of that, actually. Um, so I wonder if we should be... We can even play the C over... No, we can't. Um, no, that's too much tension. Uh, it could be, I don't know. Could be, maybe. Okay. B and C are next to each other, but because C is the root, and the B, if we did hit the C up here, the B would move, it kind of instantly moves away. So I think the little clash you get here wouldn't be that bad, actually. Um, if we did that, though, um, the melodic interval from F to C is a perfect fifth, and... Um, that's um, that's a long story. Um, I don't melody use, checklist. Yeah, melody checklist. <laughs> um, I don't want to use a melodic interval. Perfect. For those fit. of you who um, know, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's a thing here. Hack music theory. Um, yeah. <laughs> Comment below if you know what we're talking about. Perfect fourths and fifths in your melody. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Let me see. We start a club around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let us know. Let us know if you're part of the club. Um, and uh, what should we call our club? Let us know that as well. So um, mm. that's important, right? Names are important. What are we going to call <laughs> our club? Different than the hardcore club that is still watching this video. Yeah, what are we at? Over 40 minutes? I think so. Again, I think okay. I... Did you not? I forgot. You forgot? So I started it. That happened last um, week. Yeah, okay. I know. I'm it's bad. good though. It's good. Um, okay, so that's a fifth. We need so, a note in between. Yeah. Um, B. So I might just I might just pop down to the E over here. Um, bass is going up. We can just come down. That'll be nice as well. Just coming back to that E and then shooting straight up to that high C. Um, it's. That when you, whenever you have a large interval, create that creates a lot of drama. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. that because um, you, I mean, you can have a big range for your melody, but if you don't ever have any large melodic um, intervals, so if you don't ever have a big jump in your melody, um, it doesn't sound nearly as dramatic as if you mm -hmm. if you do. So. Um, so That is actually, that's cool. Um, the 16th is too quick, unfortunately. So um, I feel like, I feel like we're actually, we kind of almost need to go to it here. Um, Cause it's too, it's just too syncopated after that chord note beat. Um, <laughs> Oh, you know what? I've got another idea, actually, because I do, I didn't, I liked all of that. So I think, I think what we might do is, I think mm. I might change this and we'll head up to um, A flat in the middle. So F, A flat, C, because that A flat will go over the B. Um, so that's totally good. Um, I'll create a little uh, minor um, harmony there. So, yeah. Okay, that's good. Still, I wonder if, I wonder if, I wonder if we should. I feel like maybe it just wants to hit on mm -hmm. the, because it's, it's the highest note. It's the climax. So hitting that climax on a sixteenth syncopation <laughs> is weakening it almost. You know, yeah. you want to just bam, like on, on the chord note. Um, so, 
Uh, we can't hold the A flat over because we've got an A flat in the bass. Um, so we just need to go up. So I think we just head up to that B over there. That'd be cool. So we're kind of switching here. Bass is playing B and cello is playing A flat. And then we switch. Bass plays A flat, cello plays B. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the cool thing as well is you're getting, um, you're really kind of getting the flavor of, of the scale now because um, the double harmonic, mm -hmm. it's, it's, so, um, it's so unique because it has the three semitone intervals, so that augmented second between um, adjacent notes. But uh, like the harmonic minor scale is unique sounding because it has one of those double harmonic major um, scale has two of those which is super magic um and uh we're getting the one here so um from that's why i, I really love this phrase actually because it's um it just beautifully outlines, uh, outlines mm -hmm. the um the sound of the of the scale um which is kind of hidden in um, the the A flat in the first phrase is definitely hinting to like this is not a normal <laughs> you know this is not a normal uh, major scale at all um, but then here we really kind of so we get that three semitone interval um, we get from the flat two to the three and then we're getting it the other one here from the flat six up to the seven that's nice yeah that's nice that's so nice I'm still like um. The 16th syncopation, I'm wondering if that is just a bit too weird. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not feeling... Because it will feeling. sound much more normal just on the 8th. And you know what? Like, it's... We've brought in a couple 16ths here. So, you know, while it's not necessarily... Um, you know, it's not that 16th syncopation, because we're not accenting the offbeat. We're just playing two 16th notes here. Um, but I feel like that's maybe enough because even the two sixteenths they come in on on the and here so mm -hmm. you know it's i feel like maybe that's enough yeah. i'm undecided I might come back to that Oh, I don't know. I do like Ooh, that. It's got I like a. Know. It's just got yeah. a little like. No, I like it. I like it. It's staying. It's staying. Can you play from the beginning again? Just. Um, no, you're good. Yeah, you no. Let me just finish it, and then um, yeah. we're almost there. Um, so uh, D flat. Oh yeah. So this is. Um, so this is interesting because um, we definitely don't want to hold the C over um, but and that's the climax I don't want to I don't want to do anything up there so I feel like we kind of need to ease down um, we could stop the phrase there but I feel like that's a lot of rest um, and I'd like to I'd like to fill it out to the end of the bar so um, it makes the most of of the um, the rest up front yeah so we're just going to hit another note right on the quarter note um, beat here um, and um, I feel like um, oh, I'm still I'm, I still want to put the A in <laughs> I don't <laughs> Because it's like, it's going to create that like A major and then A minor harmony. It'd be so nice. I, oh, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know. Um. <laughs> oh, I really like that. I really like that. Please let it not be clashing with anything. Where did I put it in? What was it? On yeah. beat. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, beat three of the... 
so oh there is an A flat there but it's so quick I don't I wonder if that's let's try it You know what, I, um, I actually think that it's, um, there's so much going on, I don't think we're going to play those, I don't think the piano is going to play at the same time as the cello, so, uh, um, it's so quite overwhelming. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, there's just too much going on, so, um, I think we are totally good. Um, oh, that's really nice. How far can we hold that? Can we go A and so these are all just octaves of like the D flat and the C and then we got a B at the end here, so um we can hold all the way to the end. If we want to. Um I'll throw in a little something here because the A down to mm. E and Perfect fourth melodic interval. Club. Club knows. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll just throw a little something in there. Um, and. Oh, I wonder if we should go to the actual flat six. That could be. That's cool. what I was wondering. <laughs> that could be really cool. And we could That's actually so do it here, here even. Um... Um, yeah, because, which will also make, you know, like having chord and note, chord and note, chord and note, it's going to really kind of um, round it off nicely. Um, let's just double check. So C, um, yeah, so there's no clashing there. Um, Uh, we could do that. I actually kind of like the longer uh -huh. A, so maybe just like... Oh, that's nice. It's got a skip. It's like, because you are totally not expecting that. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. All right, I think we're done. We are done. Um, yeah, I think that's it. T, T. Let us know what kind of tea you've been drinking all this time. <laughs> yeah, and how many teas. How um, many teas. This is the only problem with doing doing the unedited videos. Um, like when we when we do the other, um, the kind of the, the edited videos, uh, we go through, at, I don't know, probably at least two or three, three, no, three or maybe three or four teas depends, depends in one on video. video. Um, the unedited ones, it's, it's... One tea and it gets cold. It's sad, sad, sad. <laughs> not, not good for the tea. But hope it's good for you. I um, hope you are filled with ideas and inspiration now. And uh, remember, uh, check out our online apprenticeship course. We want you in there. Because if you've watched this far <laughs> into the video, what are we, like over 50 minutes or something? I don't know. Um, yeah, if you've watched this far, you will absolutely love the the online course um so remember everything you need to know about how to write a song from start to finish it's all in there um and yes we literally start from a blank screen to a finished song by the end of it and that song is released it's on spotify apple wherever else um and you can learn how how to do that for yourself so um check it out and uh until next week do you have any final words? No, 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 I'm good. I'm just, I'm really grateful that you're here yeah. with us. This has been really fun. This so fun. fun. So yeah. fun. Um, we're having yeah, fun. We're having tons of fun. Yeah. Hopefully you are as well. Uh, so we will see you next week for more fun. <laughs> and I think next week I'm going to do the, the, the kind of uh, arrangement and... So that'll be a um, shorter one, hopefully. Mm, okay, never mind. Shh. So um, next week, arrangement, and then the, the final playthrough of da, the da, section. Da. Okay, until then. And we'll have to come up with a name for it. 
I'm really the... excited about that. Something carnival. You come up with a name. <laughs> yeah. You're creative. Yeah. You um you have an idea for Some the name names. Yeah. Of... And maybe next week. Of this. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know thing, in the yeah. comments. What, lots lots of things. What what should we call this? <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, we're, okay. we're rambling. Okay, um, I'm going to push the wow. mute on the microphone and enjoy the final playthrough. It's been an absolute pleasure and we'll see you next week.